Welcome back. So you may have noticed Bitcoin making headlines recently after the company saw a surge hitting a new all time high. And on top of that, tech giant Tesla now getting involved, driving up more interest. So we're going to break this all down. We're going to navigate the complex world of cryptocurrencies. Joining us now, Andreas Park, professor of finance with the University of Toronto Mississauga campus. Good morning to you, Andreas. Good morning, Melanie. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us here. So sometimes we feel bad for our friend Mike Apple, who explains things to us and we say, OK, we need more. And this is where you come in. So the idea of cryptocurrency, why is it so significant right now? What is cryptocurrency? Well, the idea is essentially is to have a digital representation of what, what makes cash, right? So when you have cash, you give me your money, you know, give me a bill and that's it. There's no third party in between. And what cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin tries to do at its core is just replicate that in the, in the digital world without so giving money from one party to another without a, you know without a bank or a credit card company and the like it's a pretty okay. cool idea it is interesting so let's stay with this board here and we've um, one of our producers has prepped this so what is cryptocurrency so again existing in those compu computer uh, computer networks and it, it it takes away the middle person right so the payments are going directly without going through an institution right a financial institution. that is correct yes so why is that significant well, it removes frictions at the first stage, right? So it allows you to, you know, to have these transactions without um, having to need, uh, need for a bank. Banks actually take a, a fair cut of payments, right? So if you're a merchant, depending on if people pay with their credit card, you pay anywhere as a merchant between one to three or even more percent of the revenue that you have. And for some, you know, slow margin merchants, that's a huge difference. So is it also a, a bit volatile? Does it make it a bit dangerous? Well, that is actually one of the problems that we see with uh, the way cryptocurrencies work is that they are basically free floating against the uh, normal uh, currencies. And so then the prices can fluctuate quite widely. Now, one has to be careful, though, because there are already solutions out there where you have literally digital dollar representations on the underlying technology. So you can pay in U.S. dollars. OK, so when you're looking at cryptocurrencies and you're looking at all these stocks, as Mike tries to explain to us every day in the role, we're seeing um, Tesla driving up some interest. You're seeing uh, with Shopify and all of this. So how does this all pan together? How does this all tie together, I should say? Well, the Tesla's move is a little strange. And I, I got to be honest with you, I'm not really that excited about Bitcoin. It's a bit of a one trick pony, right? Because the only thing that you can do with this is, is payments. Uh, they're much cooler ideas out there. There's Ethereum, which has actually been developed in Toronto by a Torontonian, um, Vitalik Buterin and his, and his team. And uh, with that, it's basically have programmable money. So you can have, um, you know, conditional payments that you can have. You can actually take loans out without a bank, all of these things. So, you know, there's basically this entire subculture developing of applications, of finance applications that work on a decentralized network. Um, and, you know, all of this is done essentially without having the need again for a huge banking operation behind that. That's exciting. Um, obviously, there's lots of concerns. It's also, if you ask me, still in the ex experimental stage, uh, but it's coming and things are happening. If uh, I may say one more thing. Yeah, please. Every single high school in Toronto has a Bitcoin club or a blockchain club, actually, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not very interesting, but a blockchain club. So the young kids are all into it. I, I'm definitely not a young kid, so that's why I have no idea what they're talking about. But no, you're, you're right in that if we're looking at this being the future, it's interesting that they're learning about it now and understanding how it plays a role in the grand scheme of things. Andreas, appreciate you breaking this down for us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care of yourself. It is 622 right now. You're watching Breakfast Television. The oldest living person in Europe has recovered from COVID-19 just before celebrating a big birthday. Well, into the hundreds. We're going to tell you what that number was after the break.